Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so honored, delightful, and glad we can. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful name of Jesus above every name. Thank you, God, for our salvation, deliverance, and redemption, all because of what Jesus did through his death, burial, and resurrection. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, we're able to receive your word. Then graft your word today in Jesus' name, which is able to change our whole life. Amen and amen. Okay, let's go over here to Isaiah. I also want to remind you, we got our divine healing scripture sheet. It looks like this. Two sides of scriptures. I want to encourage you to get this if you don't have it. And also, if you got it, you want to use it every day. I mean, you could go through this several times a day and read it. You start out in a day and end in a day. I go through it, carry it with me. You know, I usually carry it in my suit pocket, just pull it out when I'm someplace waiting. I got some time there I can, I can take and feed on God's Word. It's scriptures from your Bible on divine healing, long life, lets you know where sick disease comes from. So if you don't have it, you want to get it, jesserichministries.com. Say, hey, Brother Rich, send me out your divine healing scripture sheet. Give me your address, and we'll shoot it out to you. And it'll be great help to you. And I want to encourage you to keep reading healing scriptures every day. Now let's go over to Isaiah. In fact, Isaiah is on this sheet here. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5 says here, Surely bore our griefs, sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, with the stripes were healed. Now the next verse is on this, Matthew 8, 16, chapter 8, verse 16, 17 says, When he was come, they brought it. When he was come, they brought in him many was possessed of the devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might fill what's spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took on ferments, bear our sicknesses. Next one on this sheet is from 1 Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live in righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. The next one is Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us, the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, written curse through the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. And then from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you of God, your, uh, your, your, which, which you have of God, you're not of your own? For you have bought the price, therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. Next one is Ecclesiastes 7, 17. Why shouldst thou die for thy time? Now here comes the long life scriptures. The next one here is from Proverbs 3, 2. For length of days and long life and peace shall be added unto thee. Then Proverbs 9, verse 11 says, For by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Then we got Ephesians 6, verse 3. That it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Then we got Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as children partakes flesh blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might throw him power to that have the power of death. That is the devil. And then we got 1 John 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, he might throw the works of the devil. Next one's Acts 10, 38. From this divine healing scripture sheet we're reading. How God anointed Jesus and the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all oppressed the devil, for God is with him. Then Matthew 15, verse 30 and 31. And great multitudes came in him, having with them those lame, blind, dumb, maimed, many others, and they cast out Jesus' feet and healed them. Insomuch the multitude one to one, they saw the dumb speak, the maimed to hold, the lame to blind, uh, the lame to, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and the glorified to God of Israel. And then Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them instructions. And then on the, the other column, the right column here, on side one, the scripture says here, and he was teaching in the synagogues of Sabbath. Behold, there was a woman standing spirit and firm, 18 years, and bowed together, could no eyes lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, and when Jesus saw her, he called her and said, Woman, thou art loose, thine firm. Me. And he laid his hands on her, meat, she's made straight, and glorified God. And the rule of the synagogue answered the nation because Jesus healed the Sabbath day, and said to the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in that therefore come in last Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him, said, Thou hypocrite, do you know each one the Sabbath loose his ox, or eyes stall, and lead away to water him? And ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, Satan is bound low these 18 years, be loose his bonds the Sabbath day? Then we got John 10.10. 10. Jesus said, The thief cometh not, but for steal, and to kill, and sure, I am come, that might have life, nor more abundantly. Then we got Job 2, 7, and then uh, chapter 42, 10, and 16. So when Satan from the presence of the Lord smote Job with sore balls, and so it was his crown. And the Lord turned to captivity to Job, and he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. After this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons before four generations. And then we got Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all this in me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget us benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who will thy disease. Who redeemed life's structure, crown of love, kind of sin and mercy. Who satisfy thy mouth good things, so youth nude like the eagles. And then we got Exodus here, Exodus chapter 23. Now the scripture says here in verse 25 and 26, And you shall serve the Lord our God, uh, your God, and he shall bless thy bread and water. And I will take sickness away from thee. There, there shall nothing cast, uh, cast her young, nor be barren land the number of thy, thy days I will fulfill. And then we got Hebrews 8, 6. But now hath he attained a more excellent ministry, but how much also he's made a better covenant, establish on better promises. And then we got Hebrews 4, verse 12, and 14 through 16. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharp and to sir, piercing vine, sunder, soul, spirit, joints, mirror, and discern the thought and intense heart. Seeing then we have great high priest as past them as Jesus, Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but as all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly and throne of grace, and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help time and need. And then we got Romans 8:32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up Saul. How shall not with him also forgive us all things? Then we got James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift from above. Come down with Father lights, with whom there's no variable, so you shall not return him. Then we got James 5, 16. Confess your faults, one and pray for one to be healed. The effects of fair prayer rights, men avail of much. Then side two. We got Mark 11, 22 through 26. Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For verily I send you, the whose service say is mine. Be thou removed, be thou cast to sea, and shall not die, sorry. But shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, he shall be saved. Therefore I say unto you what things are reserved when you pray, believe you see them shall them. When you stand praying, forgive you of all against say. Your father which ever forgive you trespass. But if you not forgive, then your father which ever forgive you trespass. And then we got John 16, verse 23 and 24. And that day shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. I ask, you shall receive, John before. Then we got John 15, verse 7. Jesus said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, shall be unto you. And then we got Matthew 18, verse 18 through 20. Verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind or nurse, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose, nurse, loose in heaven. Again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth, such anything they shall ask, it should be done for my followers. For two or three are gathered together in my name, they're in the midst of and then we got Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 through 10, and verse 13, where the scripture says here, And when Jesus was in a Capernaum, there came a centurion beseeched him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth home, sick palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy that I came here from my roof. But speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. For a man in authority have him souls to many. And I say to this man, Go and he go to another, come and he come unto my servant, do this and do it. When Jesus heard, he marveled and said that follow. Verily I say, I'm not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said to the jury, Go thy way as thou will, as thou believe, so be it there. And his servants heal self same marrow. Then we have Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through verse 11. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and given him a name above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, things heaven, things earth, and things under earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ the Lord, the glory of God the Father. Then we got 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God, the pulling of strong pulling down strongholds, casting down imagination, everybody high things, all self against, uh, against knowledge of God, and bring a captivity with thought being Christ. And then we got Romans 4, set, verse 17 through 21. As it written, I made thee the father of my nation, before him believe, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be done as though they were, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of my nation, according to that was spoken, so shall I see be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither that dead Sarah's womb. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but strong faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded what he promised, he was able to perform. Now, on the uh, next column to the right, Scripture says here in James 1, verse 5 through verse 8, If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give it to all men liberally, and that very not, he should be given. But let him ask in faith, nothing waver, for either waver is like brain seen trust. For let not that man think he should receive anything, Lord. A double-bind man is unstable in his ways. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, he flee for you. Be still, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast faith, those same afflictions are cops and brethren in the world. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And the other one's from 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. Now, 1 John 1, 9 says, We confess our sins, he's faithful and just to give us sins, cleanse the righteous. Then we got Proverbs 18, 22 21. A man's belly should be satisfied with fruit's mouth, and with increased lips should be filled. Death and life power of the tongue, and they love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And then we got John 6, 63. Jesus said, Is the spirit quickened, the flesh about another, the words I speak, and their spirit and their life. 
Then we got 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God's not given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind. Then we got Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Then we got Psalm 73, 26. God is the strength of my heart. Then we got Joel 3, 10. Let the weak say, I'm strong. And then we got Nehemiah 8, verse 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Then we got Job 37, verse 23. Touching the, touching the Almighty, we can't find him out. He's excellent power and judgment, plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, day, forever. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they wait for the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings eagles. They shall run and not worry. They shall walk and not faint. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ strengthened. 3 John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, and be in health is the soul prosper. And then we got Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rules, not this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> Wherefore, take in your whole armor of God that you may withstand evil day, and having done all stand, stand therefore. Having, having, your breastplate, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shall preparation to God's peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall quench the heart of heart and wicked. And take the helm of salvation, sword and spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication, spirit, and watching there in truth all perseverance, supplication for all saints. Now, the beginning of this, we didn't read, is from Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words, incline to my sayings. Let them not part my eyes, keep them in sorrow. Now, here's why. For their life, those that find them, health all the flesh. So, here we go. The reason we want to put time in God's word every day is feed our spirit man on God's word and renew our mind to God's word. As we read, like for healing scriptures, as we read those, those remind us that by stripes I'm healed, that God promised me long life and good health. And it's important that we build ourselves up spiritually and get our mind renewed to God's word so we begin to think according to the word of God. All kinds of things go on in the world, but then nevertheless, what we're going to do is keep ourselves strong and then maintain that strength by, by meditating on the word, speaking it, and decreeing and declaring who we are in Christ Jesus, and going forth in this life ruling and reigning. Walk in divine health, expecting to live a long, healthy, productive life. You think about this. The scripture said there that our youth will be renewed like the eagles. We'll run and not worry. We'll walk and not faint. Uh, God has strengthened my heart. Now, that's how we need to talk as believers. I mean, not just in church, but every day of our life. Always beginning. We're speaking God's word. Our mind's thinking about what the word says. Anything comes up that's contrary to God's word, that has to do with steal and kill and destroy it. Immediately, we, we want to resist it. We refuse it. We don't want to accept it. We want to stand against it in Jesus' name. And practice that every day. But again, going back to the Word of God, going back to those promises, they're going to remind us what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. They're going to remind us about who we are in Christ Jesus. They're not going to do us any good laying the Bible. We need to get God's Word in our heart and in our mind. We're going to do that by reading it. We're going to do that by hearing it preached. We're going to do that by speaking it and meditating on it. And it's, it's a challenge, you know, many times because your, your flesh, your mind, or whatever, p other people like for you to go some other direction, you know, because they got something else they want to do. But it's good to every day you spend your time with God in the Word of God. And, and as you read through your Bible, highlight scriptures. Get a yellow highlighter. And highlight scriptures are speaking to you. Healing scriptures, prosperity scriptures, faith scriptures, love scriptures, scriptures like that. So you can go back over and reread them to yourself. And promises revealed to us what God's will is for our life. I mean, every Christian has got some kind of opinion about God. But what his word says is what he'll do and what he's done and what we have and what belongs to us. Now, in those epistle letters, we find out about who we are in Christ, in whom, in him, in Christ, and we know, want to learn those and begin to see ourselves this way. Whether we see ourselves that we're more than conquerors, that every day of our life we're, we're coming against anything but try to get on us in Jesus' name. You know, doubt, unbelief, pain, whatever, that we resist in Jesus' name. And we say, no, I refuse that. And, you know, one thing about staying built up in the Word, we're more apt to do that. And we're more in shape to do that because we've been doing the Word, spending some time in the Word. That's why God's saying there, one well, of the reasons, my son attended my words. See, put God's Word first. Start every day out with God's Word. You'll be tempted to, you know, take off and not do that. In the morning but no hey you want to start with your Bible you of course praise God put time in prayer but read those promises and you'll get so that as you go through your Bible you, you'll go back to those ones you've got highlighted and you'll reread those verses to yourself and that's so that energizes your faith that keeps you expecting that God will do what he said his word would do and that you're gonna receive what it's, he said belongs to you 
And as we practice God's word, implement it, do it in our life, we'll begin to see results. So that's why we, we do the word. That's why we believe the Bible, because we're after results. We want to receive from God whatever we need at the time. And we want to keep ourselves in a position that we resist anything we try to get on us that has to do with stealing, killing, destroying. Many of God's children, bless their hearts, did not keep themselves built up as they should have done. So therefore they were weak. And when Satan came around, steal, kill, and destroy, they, it, they didn't resist him. And he took them out. As believers, we want to stay in the Word. In other words, how nice we are, that doesn't stop Satan. It's, you know, be nice to people, of course. But, you know, nevertheless, we want to keep on speaking God's Word and keep ourselves strong. And why we meditate on God's Word and read God's Word it always builds a capacity inside of us for faith to be fed and also for faith to be exercised. We start applying it to our life and that faith will develop and grow. We'll become stronger as we resist the things that comes against us. Sure, there's challenges that come up in life, but we're more than conquerors. The battles of the Lord's and victory is ours. Now, it's one thing to say that in church, but it's another thing, you know, out here in the world living that way because that's where you really face things and not that you don't go through things in church, but no, we. We have to put implement God's word, implement God's word, put it in practice. Again, James 1.22 says, but be doers of the word, not hearers only. See, a lot of times people sit around and hear the word, but what part have they put in action in their life? I mean, if you even, you know, know that by the grace of God you're saved, you want to put it in action. You want to just know there's no condemnation with Christ Jesus, uh, and I'm the righteous of God in Christ, and I refuse any guilt and condemnation. That's that's doing the word. You know, saying by his stripes you're healed. And, Praising God and thanking God that you are healed. That's doing the word. Tithing, giving to the gospel. That's doing the word. I mean, that's what we all do as believers. We tithe and give, and then we build from there. We start out that way, and we should be. And that helps us just implementing, again, the word of God in our life. Practicing God's word. Getting results with God's word. Think about this, you know, just with our finances. God said there in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. I mean, I read those this morning myself. And put my name in there that I do this in Jesus' name. Now, he said, bring all the tithes to the storehouse, there be meat in my house, and prove me now, here we say, Lord of hosts, if I will not open you, the windows that pour you, I'll bless you, and sure receive. Now all of us want that, that the blessings just overtake us. We are more blessed than anything else. And that's actually all we should have in our lives, the blessing. But he went on to say, and I rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall sow the fruits of the ground, and he shall find cast fruit time for your repose. And all nations go, you blessed, for he's blessed the land, say, Lord of hosts. So we practice God's word, and we decree and declare what it says about us. I'm a tither in Jesus' name. I decree and declare this. I thank you, Lord. The windows of heaven open up me. God's pouring me out a blessing in Jesus' name. The devours you be for my sake. And then when it comes to giving, you know, being a blessing to people, Jesus said, give, and shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Shall men give our bosom. Same measure with all, shall measure unto us again. And then Jesus also promised us that whatever we do for Jesus in the gospel's sake, we'd receive a hundredfold on this time. In Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, Jesus said, there's no man or no person that left house or brother or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospels, but he should receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children lands with the world to come eternal life. That belongs to us. So even in finances, we have Malachi 310, we got Luke 6, 3, among many other ones. And Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, that we can appropriate put it in our life. Practice it. And then we've got scripts about walking in love. And we all have to walk in love and forgive people. I mean, there's people out there that, you know, and it natural is not easy to love. Maybe your spouse or someone, you're going through something. But, you know, Jesus taught it. Let's just read it. Over here in Matthew, uh, let's go to here, Matthew chapter 5. Now Jesus says here, being in verse uh, 43, you've heard it's been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate them, but I seen you love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them and spite for you and persecute you. And you need that just on the highway, especially the Belt Parkway, man. <laughs> it goes on and says here, that you may be the children of your Father which is heaven, for he make the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. He sent rain on the just and unjust light. For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the public, because their sinners are the same. Now verse 44, back there. Jesus said, but I say, you love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good, that hate you, and pray for them, spy for you, and persecute you. Now, those are the first people Jesus talked about, talked to us about loving. I mean, it's easy to love people. It's easy to love. But how about the people that talked about you, you know, don't let you do anything or treated you wrong? Well, 
you know, that's why we got the love of God. You know, do we? That's you know, we have to. I don't know, love people by faith in Jesus' name, and just cast down those thoughts. You know, the enemy brings all kinds of thoughts to our minds about people. I mean, maybe just, maybe someone in Texas back, and he starts bringing thoughts to us. Even people that it's, you know, we really like being with. I mean, thoughts come to us, but you know, we know that's not from us, and we'll, we just resist those things. So again. We, we, we've got all these promises there. We read there from this sheet here. Uh, uh, those are just some, but divine healing that belongs to us. As you read through your Bible, highlight scriptures that mean something to you. Then you go back and over them, read them again. Sometimes it's just good to take a part of the day out and just read those ones you got highlighted. Because you highlight them for a reason. They meant something to you. I mean, every scripture is God inspired. But you know, there's, there's a verse that just really ministers to you. Mary, you your brother Hagen. It was, it was on his, all of his, he has these books, uh, uh, I don't know, 26 lessons of whatever it would be, faith, healing, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. And in each chapter, he'd have a memory verse. It still does, but have a memory verse. But there'd always be James 1.22 there. But be it the word of God and it hears only. Okay, so it's in each book, end of each chapter of that, those books. There's like four of them, four different titles. All right, so. Okay, so then he'd be teaching. <coughs> Excuse me. He'd be teaching. It seemed like every time I'm listening to him teach, he refers to James 1.22. All right, so I've been listening to him. Now I'm going off to Bible school. Now I'm in Bible school and sitting in his class. And it, you know, it just seems like every time he taught, I'm sure it didn't, but, uh, you know, it felt that way to me or it seemed that way to me. He said, well, like James 1.22 said, or referred to, but be a doer of the word, not hear his only. Now, I have no idea what this even means. And one day in class, and you're supposed to be real quiet, one day, and I'm on the front row, one day he said, well, you know, like James 1.22 says, but be a doer of the word, not hear his only. Now, I don't know what that means. <clears throat> and it hit me what it means. Well, at least part of it. It means... If I'm supposed to forgive, I'm supposed to forgive. If the Bible says forgive, then I'm supposed to forgive, right? If the Bible says I'm supposed to turn the other cheek and walk in love, then I'm supposed to do that, right? Okay, so that doubles, if it says tithe, then I'm supposed to tithe. If it tells me to give, then I'm supposed to give, right? All right, so I've heard him say all this. It's almost annoying with all respects. But anyway, so it just tipped me. Oh, I said out loud before I thought. I see what that means. What the Word of God says do, just do it. And think of all that time, I had no idea what that meant. And it just suddenly went off inside of me. Well, that's how God's word does to us. And maybe sometimes we can't understand what in the world is that preacher gonna read that scripture again? And how would you like to be the preacher and they have to read scripture again? Because you know, your mind saying, you know, they've already heard this 25,000 times, you know, not that many, but well, maybe. <laughs> and you're reading it again. And you're reading it again, you know? And you're reading it again. And you're reading it again, you know? I mean, there's been programs I've done, like I shared with you before, the radio program. I read, and normally didn't do this, and I read uh, 3 John verse 2 <clears throat> for over a year, at least a year. It's five programs a week, five days a week, Monday through Friday. Now, you got people listening to it. I mean, you just may know some people, but, you know, the rest is like to go out there in radio land, you know. So I'd read it. And then Tuesday, I'd read it. And Wednesday, I'd read it. And it, you got it? Go through this week. Go through the next week. Go through the next week. It got to be after several months. I tried not to read it. And I thought, before the program's over, all right, folks, let's open our Bible. You know, of course, some people are driving again. Let's open our Bible. Read here in the third John, verse 2. Uh, you know, the letters that I got over that, whoa. Boy, people, they got ticked off that scripture. I didn't, his people had never thought about writing me, wrote me. And some of them were thick letters, you know. Well, a lot of pages. <laughs> well, you know, so I'm doing this Bible study every week. And every week, I'm teaching on healing. And there's only so many healing scriptures I know. And every week, you have some of the same people. Of course, you have some, you know, people that were regular attendees, but they're coming too. Got them? So every week I'm doing this own Bible study, and I'm starting out reading probably 1 Peter 2.24 and teaching on healing. Week after week after week. And I only know so much, so I'm going over the ground again and again. And this went on for, to me, it went on like forever. 
that's exaggerating, but yeah, that's a long time for me, you know. And this went over for months. Now what had happened is there's this couple attending and the wife is pregnant and they've told her she needs to get an abortion. I don't know this. And they've been to doctors, they've been a specialist. And they were have two children, you know, like this tall by this time. And so now she's pregnant. Well, then after a while, you know, you can tell she's pregnant, you know, and, and I'd be, you know, uh, like leaving a Bible, say, hey, good to see you guys. You know how you do, you know, kind of hang out, fellowship just for a little bit and, you know, say hi to them, you know. And every week I'm teaching on healing scriptures and reading. And again, I only know so much. And I'm open to learn more, you know, but I got to become covering the same ground, probably telling the same stories. So it goes on over nine months. This went on every week and you got people and now my mind's thinking those people are going to quit coming i mean you they, they're, they might just, just get the tape they've already heard you kind of thing all right so they do now they deliver their baby you know and end up you know baby's totally normal and they come up to me and said you know you know we didn't tell anybody they may have told their you know parents but we didn't tell anybody but you know, you probably wonder why you're teaching on healing. Oh, duh, you know. But every week we're coming and we're just gleaning off of what you're teaching. Now, see, I didn't get that from the devil. You know, you're doing a good job and keep on teaching it. Oh, no. My mind's thinking all the time. These people have already heard it. They've already heard it, you know. Well, maybe Brother Hagin didn't know why he kept saying James chapter 1, verse 22. But there was a guy sitting in an audience that one moment, it's going to go off inside of him. Even though I was kind of critical about what I thought about it, didn't understand it, why does he keep reading it, why does he keep saying it? And you know, sometimes God just keeps bringing something to us till we finally get it. He's just hes just as interested in one person as he is in the multitudes. But that's how he is. And you know what? That family got a miracle baby. It wasn't because of me. That family got a miracle baby. They said that, you know, talked about how great it was to come every week and hear that talk. Of course, they're reading scriptures and got tapes, you know, we like, like we have CDs today, and listen to those. You know, we don't know why God keeps reading scripture to us. You now, I used to have these um, CDs, series of CDs, and Brother Egg has uh, redeemed the curse. And I found, I'm leaving to go preach somewhere, and I got just enough time, probably get there, you know, just a little bit early, and get started. And I don't like, you know, doing anything before the meeting. And so I'm pulling out of my neighborhood. It keeps coming to me. Go back and get that series of CDs or tapes, whatever it was. Go get back and get them. Well, I, you know, I should have done that when it's in the house because now I could be late. I, you know, that'd be terrible. I can't be late. And I'm never late, you know. So I realized I got to go back home. Because the further I go, the longer it's going to take now to go. I should have went back when I first got this. But it keeps coming to me, you know. Yeah. You know, like when you're supposed to give somebody money or whatever, you know, and it keeps coming. It's the same kind of thing, you know. So I go back home. Now, first of all, where are they at? Are they upstairs? Are they in the main part of the house? Are, you know, they in a basement? Are they all going to be together? You know, I got CDs all over the place. So... I, and, I, and I cannot be late. I got to get this Bible study. I got to be there. You know, I lecture people for being late. You know? So I got them, got one here, one there, hurried up, got out of the house, plugged through it in the tape player or the CD player or whatever it was, and I started listening to them day after day after day after day. I've already heard them, you know, several times. Don't know why I'm doing this, but I know I got to stay with these. Okay? So I keep doing it, keep doing it. Days, weeks go by. Uh-huh, something rose up. I thank you, Jesus. As stubborn as I was, and halfway rebellious of not wanting to go back right away to get them, there was a reason for it. I'm not trying to spiritualize any of this, but you and I always usually know what we need to do. But we kind of hmm, hesitate, I've heard them, I got it, you know? There'll be one tape or one CD that you and I have to, you know, keep listening to. And see, we'd like to have this brand new series that just came out because in there's the new stuff, you know, which is great. But God's leading us and he knows why. And I don't know why. And later on, you realize, man, that was just like that Bible study, just like that radio broadcast. I don't realize what it's going to do. 
sure it was kind of embarrassing to go through this, you know, because your your ego and your pride, people think that's all you that's all you teach, that's all you know. But I've been on both sides of this. Had to do it to preach it, and had to be sitting there listening to it. Why in the world does this person keep saying James 1:22? Why do they keep going over this for? Because Jesse Rich is in the audience, and God's trying to help me. Because He's interested in each one of us. And Father God, we thank you today in Jesus' name. We just give you all the praise and glory. You're so patient with us. We thank you for our salvation and healing in Jesus' name. Let's say this together. By his stripes, I am healed. My God supplies all of my need in abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. And I've received all my blessings. I claim them and receive them by faith in Jesus' name. I'm protected. I'm healthy and whole. And so is my family in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? Why don't we just pray this prayer? If you're not too sure, I'm going to read this to you from uh, Romans chapter 10. The Bible tells us how to do this in verse 9 and in verse 10 and verse 13. The Bible says here, and this is what, it, what the Lord said, that if thou shalt confess in thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, with the mouth confession made salvation. Uh, verse 13. For whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's just pray this prayer together. And receive Jesus Christ the Lord. If you're not too sure if you've ever done this or you know don't remember, let's just do it anyway. <clears throat> so let's say this. Just repeat after me and, and mean it. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe Jesus crucified. He took my sins on the cross and the punishment to sin. He died. He was buried. And God, you raised him to the dead, and Jesus is alive now. Jesus. I confess you as my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord. And I believe, Jesus, you're, you're alive today. You've been raised from the dead. And God, I thank you that I've received Jesus as my Lord today, your only begotten Son. Thank you, God, for saving me and giving me your Son, Jesus Christ. And God, I thank you now you're my Father, and you'll take care of me the rest of my life and throughout eternity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You prayed that prayer? Good for you. That's the best thing you've ever done. It's the best thing any of us ever done if we receive Jesus. We'll never be, do something greater than just that other than leading somebody, you know, Lord, to, and get them saved. So I'm going to encourage you. Find a church to go to. It's just Jesus the only way to heaven. And, you know, our, our, these programs like this and messages like this would be a great help to you also. If you'd like to email me, do that at jesserichministries.com. Joy to be here today. I want to encourage you. You keep thanking God and praising God for what His Word says about you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.